I used to be afraid, you know, frankly, when I was growing up as a kid and, and the contact that I had with church, somehow I got the impression that whatever was, whatever was contrary to me and whatever was, was impossible for me, that's what God was going to want me to do. You know, whatever I, you know, was most, uh, uh, you know, disagreeable to me, why well, God would surely want me to do that. So my thought was, I need to stay away from this God that wants me to do disagreeable things, you know. But I found out just the opposite was true. He knew me better than I knew myself. And He knew what would perfectly, listen to this, satisfy and suit me and fulfill whatever needs I had as an individual and be able to use me in whatever way suits Him. And the same for you. I'm just using me as an example. Uh, same for you. He's able to work with each one. See, all He's wanting you to do and me to do is to walk with Him. Notice that. Walk with me. Work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or real fitting on you. And finally, verse 30. Keep company with me. And you'll learn how to live freely and lightly. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, keep company. We'll see, there's the key. Keep company with me. Just hang out with Him. You know, and we're going to talk about this in a minute. He's with us whether we recognize it or not. But the key is to acknowledge it and recognize the fact that He's with us and lean on Him and depend on Him. Now, on the negative side of it, Anton, if you could give me John chapter 5, verse 39 in the King James. I want you to see he, he says that he uses these same words speaking to... Uh, those Jews in his day, the nation of Israel, who did not uh, come to him. I want you to notice that he used the same language here in verse 39. John 5, 39 in the uh, King James. Yeah, he's speaking to these Jews that were not receiving from him. He says, Search the Scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And you will not come to me that you might have life. Notice he says to them, having eternal life or having life has to do with one single thing. Uh, a single thing coming to Him. Isn't that what He's saying? And this makes us a little bit uneasy because He says, search the Scriptures. In them you think you have eternal life. You know, for them, all they had was the Old Testament. And when Jesus uses the phrase Scriptures, He has in mind the Old Testament because that's all there was. Same with Paul when he talks about the Scriptures. They mean uh, the, the Old Testament because that's all that, that there was at the time. They didn't have a New Testament at the time. Uh, and what they were doing, listen, he says, you should have been, he says, search the Scriptures because you think you have eternal life in the Scriptures, but he said, they testify of me and you're not coming to me and that's where you're going to get life if you come to me. Did you follow that? Now, now think this through. If Jesus said the purpose of the Old Testament Scriptures was to testify of me and you're not coming to me, well, what was it they were looking for then? I mean, what was it they were searching the Scriptures for? Well, I would uh, submit to you they were searching the Scriptures for things to do to make themselves right with God by what they did. And Jesus is saying to them, uh, you know, you're looking in the Scriptures for the wrong thing. What you need to be looking in the Scriptures for is how they're all talking about me, how they're pointing to me. See, the whole goal and the whole point of the Scriptures and the Bible and the whole really the whole goal and point of Bible study or coming to church and reading from the Bible is that it points us to Jesus. Because listen to me carefully, the, the, all the answers in your life are going to come right from Him. They're going to come from Jesus because you're in a union with Him. And Paul says, don't let your minds be distracted from the simplicity of that situation, of that union, of that relationship with Jesus. Uh, he says, you will not come to me that you might have life. Well, thank God we have come to Him. We have come to Him and we do have life. You know, we're here in chapter 5. Uh, speaking of that, this, is, this isn't in my notes. I didn't mean to read this, but look over in chapter 6 just for a second. I want you to notice something just in passing. This is just a passing thought. When, I, when he said, you won't come to me, John 6, uh, verse uh, uh, 37. John 6, 37. He said to those... Jews that didn't believe in Him. He said, you won't come to Me that you might have life. But what about us that have come to Him? Here He talks about us. Verse 37, All that the Father giveth Me shall come to Me. Well, if you've come to Him, then evidently He's talking about you. And Him that cometh to Me, now that's talking about us who have come to Him. He says, I will in no wise cast out. Now that's a good thought, isn't it? Let that just sink in on your mind a little bit. See, he said to those Jews, you're searching the Scriptures, and I put in parentheses, looking for things to do to make yourselves right with God, independent from Jesus, but he said, really, they're testifying about me, and you need to come to me. Well, we as Christians, we have come to Him, right? That's why we're here today. We have come to Him, but he says, uh, notice that he's talking about us now. Him that cometh to me, I will in no wise. Now, this is... You know, I like the King James translation. I really do. But let's just be honest. It was translated and put into English 400 years ago. 
And, and we use the language in, in slightly different ways and some kind of uh, usages we don't use. So we don't say uh, in no wise. In my everyday life, I never say that. In no wise. In, in Oklahoma, what we would say is ain't no way. <laughs> there is no way. There is no possibility. In other words, uh, those who come to me, there is not a possibility that I will cast them out. Because all he's looking for is for people to come to him. You know, once you've come to Him, you've come to the one who, who's got the capacity and the ability to straighten everything else out. And notice, remember what we just read in Matthew 11, 28, 29, 30. Walk with me. You know, all He's looking for from those who come to Him, just walk with me. Just walk along with me. Invite me into your life. Just let me walk with, all, with you in all the different things of your life. Uh, him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Anton, would you give me the message on this one? I love the, what the message says here. Do you see where that is? Every person the Father gives me eventually comes running to me. And once that person is with me, I hold on and I don't let go. How about that from Jesus? You know, I wish someone, I wish I would have had this. When I first became a Christian, I wish I would have known this. Somebody would have told me. I wish I could have read it. Because I didn't have this impression. The impression I thought was that God accepted me on probation. <laughs> and, I was, and I was on probation. And as long as I... Uh, didn't make any mistakes, then everything was okay. But the first time I made a misstep or did something wrong or, or failed in some way, I was in danger of getting booted out the door. That's what I felt like. I thought that. And, and sometimes things I heard reinforced that, that I was on thin ice. I was skating, you know that, what that means? I was skating on thin ice. I was just, well, okay, I'll save you reluctantly. <laughs> you know, that's kind of what I thought. Uh, but I'm just looking for the first opportunity to get rid of you. You know, that's kind of how I felt. I was, you know, very conscious of my own faults and flaws and shortcomings. I was, I, that seemed very real to me, and his love for me seemed very far away and, and not very certain. But notice what he says here. I love this translation. He says, once a person is with me, I hold on and I don't let go. Now, I thought in the beginning that my relationship with God hinged on how well I could hold on to him. And I knew for a fact that, that my grip was um, maybe not perfect, you know. My, maybe I didn't have a perfect grip. Maybe I... I was afraid of that. Maybe I, you know, maybe I, maybe my, I might fail in my hold on God. But what I never took into account was that a union works both ways. When we enter into a union with Jesus, He enters into a union with us. By the way, it's His idea. <laughs> it's not something we're twisting His arm and getting Him to do reluctantly. And what I didn't take into account was that when I took hold of Him, He took hold of me. And even though my grip might fail, His grip never fails. And that I was secure in His hold upon me.